Hello YouTubians! I hope you've been having an awesome day. I have and I'm gonna play some more Evil Land. Now you may remember we left off at the final boss battle and I was getting nowhere and quite frustrated. And since then I have played this game a bit more off camera and I am still getting nowhere and quite frustrated but slightly more nowhere than I was before. I have to admit this kind of uh, boss battle where you have limited health and have to replay the entire thing from the start if you uh, including the cutscenes and the dialogue, if you had die is not the kind of thing I like because I hate to repeat anything. That's just me. You know. I mean you might think, well but you like roguelikes, they have permadeath, you have to repeat the whole game. No, you don't, because yes I have permadeath, but the game's also randomised. So the next time you play it won't be anything like the first time. You're not continually battling against the same enemies over and over. But hey, yeah. So, as you remember from last time, in the first part of the boss battle, what you have to do is attack the uh, crystals on the back of his hands. And I think they take about five or six hits each, it feels like. And, you know, if you get caught between his hands like that, he will breathe fire on you, which hurts. Okay. Uh, keep just hitting that crystal. And when we hit his, the last crystal, his arms will fall off. Sorry, when we've hit the second crystal enough times that it goes black like this, his arms will fall off and then he will start breathing fire like this. And this is where I was stuck last time, but I figured out what the secret is. I was thinking, oh, you have to attack the crystal on the front of his chest. And that's kind of half of it. Yes, you have to attack the crystal on the front of his chest, but by attacking that crystal, it causes this red blob to come out of his back and then you have to run around quickly and in the right random direction to be able to do some damage to the red blob before it pops back into his back. So yes, here we go, we should be able to do damage and that will make his shoulders wiggle in a most sexy and alluring manner. Okay, so done that, hit him in the crystal, hit him in the ball, no, missed. Now another useful thing is if if you're right behind him and you start running at the same time as he moves and you time it just right, you won't get hit by his fire breath. Fire breath will end just before he gets to you. Of course, I have timed it right there and yes, I was walking in the, running in the wrong random direction because you don't really know. I don't know if there's a pattern to the direction that this uh, red blob comes out of his back in, but... Uh, I haven't worked it out. So, okay, this is about as far as I've got. The next section of the boss battle I have not conquered ever. So, okay, this is the guy we saw before that my dragon daddy uh, fried and barbecued. You might have broken my stone armor, but in this shape you cannot hit me anymore and I will burn every part of you. And he's true to what he said. We cannot hit him, he will just stay way out of reach and throw energy balls at us. And what we need to do is that. And I cannot know how many times I've been trying to do that. And that is actually the first time I've managed it. So thank you to the power of all the people watching this. You have made me hit him with his own energy bombs. Actually, I actually had to go online and look up a walkthrough to see what to do. Ouch see how to beat him because I kind of got the idea that there was something special about the blue energy things but I tried a few times to whack it with my sword and failed and uh, nothing happened and it turns out you just have to have it be have wonderful timing ouch and eventually he will just kill me with these energy bombs ah, right uh, missed okay Okay, that should, that missed. Oh dear. Okay, blue one. Right, I need to time this just right to hit him. Okay. Dodge the red one, and then when the blue one comes, whack it with your sword so that it goes back and hits him again. That is apparently the secret. Ah yes. During all these centuries, I have witnessed many amazing things. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in the rain. 
The time has come for me to rejoin my people! Goodbye. Love the epic music in the background, by the way. Love it. And I have unlocked the hero achievement! Yes! Yay me! And thank you to the positive, well-wishing power of anybody who's watching this video. You have made me do what I couldn't before and defeat Zephyros. So, I won the game! I beat it! I killed the bad guy! I... Well, I didn't save the princess because she died, but it was motivation for the final boss fight, wasn't it? Closing thoughts. I had a lot of fun playing Everland. I can't deny it. I think probably the early stages of the game are slightly stronger than the latter stages. I think it would have been like a tremendous two to three hour game but it took me like four to five hours uh, maybe I'm just slow away and died a lot I, I'm not sure sure but and there was definitely felt like the early stages where I was constantly unlock constantly unlocking exciting new RPG features were a lot more fun than the latter stages where that kind of slowed down because there weren't that many new features to unlock and those that were weren't as revolutionary or exciting and the game had to tried to carry itself a bit more on gameplay and storyline and of course the storyline is completely derivative as it should be in a game like this and the gameplay is okay but not wonderful but you know I've still enjoyed it I'd still recommend it if you see it on a steam sale 50% off buy it don't even think about it this was Evoland and thank you so much for watching goodbye for now I will be back soon